Anyway, one can see, and I should stress with Alzheimer's, it is not a natural consequence of aging, it is a specific disease. Sadly, one that features primarily in older people, but it is not a consequence of aging. But we can think of it as a loss of the mind due to the dismantling of those connections, the personalization of the brain. But you might say, well, hang on, we can lose our mind in other ways, <coughs> nicer ways, possibly. We can blow our minds, we can let ourselves go. Interesting phrase, let yourself go, what's that mean? Um, you can have a sensational time, a time where a word is stripped of all cognitive content, aren't you? Now, these phrases, which we use so glibly and easily, to my mind, actually are very similar, and they are suggesting something like this. Here we are. Here's us in an hour or two's time. Yeah? Um, so these people yeah, are in a world stripped of all cognitive content. Yeah? Techno, 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 techno. And the premium... Now, seriously, the premium is on raw sensation, bright lights, the beat, correct me if I'm wrong, experts who go to these things, yeah? um, the beat of the music. It's the beat of the music. It's not the romantic lyrics or the meaning of the words, you know. It's more the raw sensations that are coming. And these people are right in the present. They are not thinking about the past or the future, I don't imagine. They don't look like they're thinking about their mortgage, do they? Yeah. Or what they're going to do afterwards. Or so. so these are people, as we all are, when we go skiing or dancing or have sex or eat nice food or have a fine wine, so I'm not being rude about people going to rage, we all have our own ways of letting ourselves go, of having a sensational time. And what all those very diverse ways have, wine, women, and song, drugs, and sex, and rock and roll, what they have in common, I would suggest, is an abrogation of the sense of self. That is to say, um, where you are the passive recipient again of raw sensations, like the small child. Raw sensation, yuck, wow. Yuck. And you're just responding. You are not self conscious. You are conscious, you are not self conscious. If you are, you wouldn't dance like this, I don't think. You're not self conscious. You feel at one. You feel at one with everyone else, and people on ecstasy say they do feel at one with everyone else, and the very word ecstasy in Greek means to stand outside of yourself. Yeah. And the way drugs work, drugs such as ecstasy, is guess what? They impair the connections. They work on those transmitters and impair the functioning of the connections. So one can think then of the mind, a temporary loss of mind in this world. What's fascinating is we pay money to do this, that's another story. But it's a world characterized by experience, by raw sensation, um, by direct experience coming in from the outside world, <coughs> the mind on hold, the mind disabled, the, those connections not being used or pressed into service. Instead, the much more simple, direct sensory processing that characterizes the early brain, where understanding will be suspended. And I'm suggesting that understanding is seeing one thing in terms of something else, and related to that, as I've said, the significance would be the personalized configuration. So your mum has a significance to you shared by no one else. So I thought, because I was talking to creative people, I'd show I wasn't such a Philistine. Here we have a picture. <coughs> this will mean different things to different people in different ways, because this is playing to your personalized connections, your personalized view, your personalized experiences, and values, and thoughts, and memories, both visceral and um, highly cognitive, and academic, and emotional, and personal, and so on so that we would all get something very different, I imagine, when we look at this. So I'd like to suggest, therefore, the mind is the personalization of your brain through the unique dynamic configuration of neural connections, in turn driven by your unique experiences. No one has your life, not even an identical thing. It's giving you a unique narrative. You have a unique life story, and it's a life story, and your mind enables you, unlike animals, to know the past and the future, to be able to be aware of a sequence <coughs> through which you are gradually evolving, changing every moment. OK, so given all that, we're now going to look at the future, and then we're going to look at creativity at the end. So what will be the effects of screen culture now? I hope I've, I hope I've set this up sufficiently to convince you you have a unique brain. The good news is it's highly sensitive to the environment. The bad news is that it's also therefore very vulnerable to whatever is happening in the environment. So when we create an environment where we have young people spending some average six hours a day living in two dimensions. Is that going to change their thinking? Is that going to change their minds, their mindsets? Let's think about that. Well, I would suggest that um, if you're looking at a screen, by definition, it's going to be strongly visual, that you're going to be very literal rather than abstract. The screens and icons are not very good at giving abstract concepts like books are. How would you show an icon democracy or honor? 
Um, so it's a very literal world, and I often wonder, even there, how many children nowadays actually recognize the egg timer for an egg timer. <coughs> Do they really know what an egg timer, what an egg timer is? How many kids using computers today ever have ever used an egg timer in their life like that? Um, so my own view is they take things literally. Um, I would suggest a shorter attention span. Now, this might sound rather Luddite, and I don't mean to be so, but I just want to point the facts. Over the last 10 years, there has been a three-fold increase in prescriptions for Ritalin. Um, that's to say, for attention deficit disorder, there's now about 55,000 prescriptions a year to children. Um, that's risen, it's trebled over the last 10 years. Is it suddenly there's some terrible virus that's ascended over the last 10 years? Probably unlikely. Or is it that suddenly it's recognized more, possibly? Or could it be because of the increase in putting people in front of a screen at an early age, bombarding them with very fast-paced icons and stimulations that might drive those connections to be sensitive much more to short attention spans rather than the kind of attention spans that are required when you read a book or listen to a story. No conceptual framework, I'd like to suggest. And um, this issue of process over content. So let me explain those last two things. Those, everyone in this room was brought up reading books. And when you read a book, the author takes you by the hand and they take you on a journey. Now, it might not be a journey you like or that you agree with, but nonetheless, there are, it's a narrative. There's a series of steps that are vaguely, one hopes, connected in some kind of quasi-logical sequence. Starting when you go to the end. Um, you then go on another journey and another journey. And each journey you make, because your brain is your brain, is evaluated in terms of what has happened before. So gradually, you evaluate each journey, each book, in terms of the framework that becomes ever more complex the more books you read. And my own view is this is what education used to be. It used to be, as I was going to say, mine was, where you start to develop concepts and ideas through reading many different books and comparing and contrasting, so that as you read more, so you put it to an ever more complex context in terms of how you understand how things are significant <coughs> to you. You are acquiring checks and balances and um, tests for everything you read that are married and worked up against, benchmarked against what you've read already. Now imagine that you never had that, that you're parked in front of a screen saying yuck and wow and yuck and wow. Um, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The world has no meaning. Literally, things will not have the meaning that they've had to someone who has developed a conceptual framework. So if you're now, if people, or everyone here was brought up on books, we can all go on Google and we know what we want to find out, we know what's meaningful and meaningless. What we believe, what we don't believe, whether it's right or wrong, whether it's interesting or not. If you don't know those things, what will you do? Instead, you're going to put a premium, you put a premium on other things, the visual quality. Boom, bang, oh, yeah, oh, well. So you'll be putting perhaps a premium, not so much on the intrinsic meaning, because it has none for you, in terms of more the literal experience. And could it be, and this is why I'm interested in process over content, could it be that what you're doing now is getting your enjoyment and your from the experience of doing this, the process, rather than on the content, rather than on the meaning. If you think about it, if you play a computer game to rescue the princess, do you really care about the princess? No. You care about the process and the excitement. You might as well be slaying a dragon and rescuing a princess. When you read a book, it's a good book, you care very much about the princess. Yeah? So that's the difference. It's process over meaning and content. So our children, therefore, are looking at this cyber world. And I, I did a speech in the House of Lords about two years ago on this. We did a debate on it for those who are really interested. It was a about May, almost a year, two years ago, May 06, if you want to look it up. Um, we're exploring this, and it, it was a, a fascinating debate. And I just, I don't want to sound like a Luddite, I just want to get us to think about these things, because we're, we're, computers are here, the cyber world's here, how do we harness it? Because imagine you were looking at this six hours a day. So removed. So it's slightly like reality, but not exactly reality. Yeah. 